Dr. Sean here. I'm joined with uh, my patient who we did a prior FUE hair transplant and we got over 2,500 grafts FUE. And this is the back of the scalp and this is just uh, a month and a half out. And you could see the back has healed really nicely and we could zoom in on this. But he wears his hair in number two and you could barely even see the scars. Now we're going to go ahead and also shave it and show that as well but it looks great so the punches are very small the benefit of using growth factors for healing is really amazing so today we're going to be working on the crown area and we're going to put about 2,000 to 2,500 grafts in the crown now I have done a lot of crowns and the trick to doing crown hair restoration is that you need to find where the calic is and the calic for him is right over there. So you spin the hair, right? So the hairs follow the calic really flat to the skin. So the hairs go in this direction, go in this direction, then they go down. Now, the hair is going in a downward direction. We try not to emphasize a lot, but the hair is going in a forward direction. Whatever you place grafts here will give oomph volume one centimeter along. And because it's the crown, you want to go really, really flat to the skin, right? And you want to cover around this region for him right over here. And because it's going really flat, it crawls along the skin and gives you that coverage that you want. But the key purpose for the, doing the crown is not to put the hairs at a 70 degree angle. It's to follow the calic and go really acute. That means flat to the skin. It requires special techniques, it requires special technicians. But that is the key. It's more time consuming, but to, to get, you require 30% less grafts and get 30% better illusion by following this method. And trust me, I've followed, I've done a lot of different methods. And that's about it. So six weeks ago, we did about, we put out 2,500 grafts around this area. And today we're gonna to be doing another 2,000 in the crown. But I wanted to show is that all the grafts have fallen out, right? Which happens before they regrow. But if you take a look, you don't really see any skin changes. You don't see any couple stoning of the incision sites, right? It looks, the skin looks really good. There will be still slight redness, but no significant skin changes. No dipping, no couple stoning. It looks very smooth. And this is because I use very expensive sharp instruments to create the sites. So, the skin itself looks really nice even if you were to go ahead and trim the hair or shave the area and that's really important that i wanted to point it out so obviously nothing has grown yet yet because it has only been six weeks after the procedure but how the skin looks is very important and uh, it's part of the whole result then that's really key so when you look at the crown, right, and you see there is a part of the crown that goes in a downward direction, you don't want to focus too much on that because it takes away from the oomph and the volume. I mean, you're going to lose this at one point. So you're gonna, I'm going to put slight hairs going in a downward direction, but the majority of the hairs will be going upward right? because whatever you put here gives you volume one centimeter downward. That's important because you don't have infinite number of graphs, you know. So, you agree on that? Yo, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Later so we can take from my beard though, don't worry. Perfect, <laughs> I love it. Session number three, the, the beard. You know, actually, can I tell you, I think you could, after this, you could even do another session from the back of the scalp. Okay. I, you know, it's... Uh, it's pretty quick back right there. Yeah, the user growth factor, these things will help out a lot. I mean, it depends. I mean, obvious, look, every time you're going to get a bed less. So, I just shaved the back of the scalp. So, about uh, six weeks ago, we had removed 2,500 grafts. So, we're going to remove another 2,000 to 2,500 today. But, now that I shave, you barely can't see much of the scars at all. Right, obviously still slightly red and has slight ingrown hairs, but it looks very even. 
and even with shape it looks really nice because we use very very small punches and the use of growth factors so obviously I delineated right where I want to go and where I want to get the graphs but zoom again it looks consistent even though I have removed 2,500 graphs the way I do it is that I remove one out of every three or one out of every four graphs. So there's not one area that more graphs have been removed than the other. So everything looks balanced, consistent, harmonious, and this is an art. And it's very important. So congratulations, we're gonna do 2500 today. So just to re-emphasize, see when you shave the back of the scalp, right? The reason it looks good after, even after removing 2,500 um, grafts is because I remove one out of every three or four grafts. So it creates a nice balance, harmonious, and that's really key. So all the areas looks balanced out. And that's the key. And this is an art. And even extracting is an art. So when I extract from the top, nothing is on straight lines. You don't see any straight lines at all. Everything is done in a very special pattern, right? That is balanced, that you know reflects what would occur in nature. So when you trim the back of the scalp, it still looks good. This is the crown area and this is right before I'm going to make the incision sites. But the important thing, we have to understand and recognize that the calic is here and the hair is going in a spiral direction. So the best way to get the best results, we need to identify where the calic is, follow it in that direction and make the hairs really flat to the scalp. So let's, uh, let's begin. I actually do not shave the hair so I can see the natural direction of the hair. So it's almost impossible to make the direction with the right hand. You have to use the left hand. That's how it's supposed to be situated to get a natural look. So it's the end of the day. We have already placed the graphs and I want to point a few things out. First, we do shave slightly beyond the boundary for better placing. However, I want you to notice that this is an art and in nature, nothing grows on straight lines. So everything has a zigzag pattern to it. So when he loses more hair around it, things look natural. The second thing is that the calic is right here and that it spins just like the way I made it. All these hairs go where they are supposed to go in this direction. They change direction and they go upward. All the hair go to the right. Here it turns and goes downward. This is an art. The way it's made, the way it's placed, how beautifully these graphs are aligned with one another. It's really significant and it's very important. It took me many, many, many years to identify and figure out techniques that would allow me to do patterns like this. Now that you could put 2,200 graphs, significant amount of them having threes in it without the graphs popping. The other thing is that obviously it's a huge area, we can't cover the whole thing, so it tapers, so it looks natural. And these are important. So whoever that does it must know the, the logistics of how people use hair in the crowd and how it's supposed to be reconfigured. Now, so today we did 2,200 graphs. Last month we did about 2,500. So we did about 4,700 like graphs. How is the procedure there like? I mean, you know, what would you say if somebody is contemplating this, right? and they have some fears about doing the procedure. How is it overall? I found it very easy, not scary whatsoever. The, the pain is uh, very controllable with all the, you know, the, the, the medicine, the numbing, and, and the laughing gas, and um, 
o overall, I mean, I, I was napping, I would say, for a lot of the procedures. So, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be afraid at all. I, I think it's definitely uh, worth the time, and uh, I'm very excited to see the outcome. Me too. So, look, I mentioned that something, the pain. I mean, obviously, you have to numb the end. You just have to do it. But using the vibrator and the laughing gas, do you think that really helps out, you know, make it more tolerable? Oh, 100%. 100%. Well, That's you know, important. yeah, from the, the massager to the to the numbing to the laughing gas, uh, it, it all takes takes the edge off, to say the least, for sure. And what else? So we extract the graft, so it's two hours, and then you have lunch. So, you know, do you think that the lunch is set at the right time? I mean, you know, or... What oh, you oh, yeah, I mean, the whole process is delightful. I mean, you know, it feels like you're being taken care of by the best of the best. We really, really try and we think of every little detail. I mean, even the restroom is right across from the hall, you know, we... Breakfast, we necessarily bring it, lunch, obviously snacks, etc. You know, we want, we want to make sure that you're comfortable. I mean, not a lot of people have the laughing gas. I mean, these laughing gas, all these help out. Just take the edge off, make it easier, do some Xanax, you know, make the day a better experience. And I hope you achieve that. Oh, 100%. Thank you. Know, you know, because I, I truly believe that the results go hand in hand with experience. You know, so. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Well, we're going to be following up over the next, um, you know, four to five months as the hair start to grow out, and up to the next one year, and uh, see how the results grow and frame your face, and we go from there. Perfect. Thanks so much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, doctor.